Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. The end of the weekend is upon us. It is the Earth Master out here, 11.08 p.m. California time. June 1st, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.8 across California. Also a little bit of uptick going on across the Hayward Fault there, the Bay Area. We'll check that out here in a second. I know quite a few folks wondering if we're going to see the auroras tonight. Looks like they're finally starting to uh, appear a little bit. I just went outside here in Northern California in my backyard to see if I could see it by chance. I can't. Uh, last May, or uh, yeah, May of 2024, we had a, a fairly significant solar storm, and I could see the auroras from my backyard. Tonight, not so much, but it is possible there across the northern tier states, maybe even down into Oregon here. It looks like Idaho, South Dakota area. Got a decent chance of seeing the auroras right now. That's all thanks to a uh, CME that was blasted off the sun here a couple days ago. I know last night uh, was a, a decent amount of uh, aurora activity as well around the globe. Uh, that is, uh, looks like it's going to work in our favor this evening with that BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field. Bottom of this line, south of this line, that is exactly what you want to allow the auroras to amplify like we're seeing right now. Earlier in the evening, started up here north of that black line, uh, that would be a northward tilt, suppressing the auroras. But anything south here, uh, below this line, is good news. Now, notice uh, a lot of stuff is going down here as far as the speed, uh, the temperature, and the plasma density is all going down. But... We're still uh, underneath the influence there of some of that uh, plasma cloud, the CME, that got blasted off there a couple days ago. And it looks like we're still being bombarded here with protons. Got, uh, looks like a, um, it's got to be close to an S1 radiation storm. Uh, either way, it looks like we're still, you know, got those protons affecting us here on the planet. That uh, they, could, they can continue for a couple days there. It looks like that's going to be the case for this one as well. So roar activity, G4 storming conditions possible. Uh, we're up around the 5, 6 range right now. Uh, and again, the BZ component there is pointing south, allowing for this amplification to go on. So if you're out there in the northern tier states, Washington, Oregon even, uh, maybe even extreme northern California there, if you have some dark skies, uh, look to the north. If you can't see it with your eyes, maybe you have to break out your phone. And a lot of times these newer uh, iPhones, Androids, not for sure whatever you use uh, can pick up the auroras if you put them on a uh, like a three second exposure there it's pretty neat to see if you can't see it with your eyes so check that out as uh, far as flaring activity goes uh, it's went down it's gone down actually uh, not a whole lot of flaring activity currently taking place proton event still at 99 percent chance obviously that's uh, playing through 15 percent chance there for x flare m flare 65 percent chance Let's take a look here at the uh, sunspots here real quick, see what we got for magnetic complexity, and then we'll get into earthquake activity. Uh, it looks as though this massive area that produced that large, long-duration M-flare, along with the subsequent CME from uh, the activity that we're seeing right now, uh, is uh, starting to wither away a little bit. Uh, not seeing any... Well, there's still a little bit of magnetic complexity up here in this area. Uh, but it's not looking as dynamic as what it was here a number of days ago when it did produce that M flare. Uh, this region down here is starting to do a little, little bit of uh, interesting uh, magnetic complexity here around the central area of that core. So this may be a new area to watch here for some stronger flaring. Uh, but aside from that, a couple other weak spots out there across the eastern limb. We'll continue to watch that though. But uh, if you're out, if you're you're staying up tonight get outside and see if you can see the auroras out there it should be uh, pretty neat to see if you are an aurora watcher like me all right let's take a look here at earthquake activity got uh, some movement there across the bay area of northern california uh, i wouldn't quite call this a swarm but uh, earlier this evening had uh, a little bit of uptick here directly on the hayward fault for a 2.4, a 1.4, and a 2.5. This thing is really close uh, into, um, well, it's past the regular time interval here uh, and longer than some historical time periods where we should should have seen a large earthquake on this fault system by now. This is one of the more uh, feared fault systems here because it does run through a highly populated area of the East Bay. We're talking about Hayward, Berkeley, uh, Oakland area. That's... Uh, 
you know, there's a lot of population down there. It's a concrete jungle, and this area is primed for some big earthquake activity. And there is uh, some speculation here that that may be linked underneath a portion of the bay to the Rogers Creek Fault. And if that's the case, that's a more lengthier fault system. And the two combined could uh, produce an, an earthquake in excess of a 7.5. Uh, so, you know, not only the Hayward Fault, but they could obviously could produce a low-grade 7, but mix in some uh, further fault systems up north and you get to a 7.5. But either way, something that big uh, would definitely be damaging across the uh, Bay Area. But it's it's coming up. It's coming up because we we a lot of time has passed out here since the last big one. Not talking about the 1906 earthquake. That was on the, uh, the San Andreas Fault here. We're talking about the Hayward Fault. That's well overdue. Also, uh, 1.9 down here. Uh, looks like it's in between the Hayward Fault and the Calaveras Fault. So just watch that. It's been awfully quiet here recently. Uh, but now all of a sudden we got the Hayward Fault throwing off some earthquakes there. And they're really not small microquakes either. Uh, at the 2.5 level or just below. Uh, some movement along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Southern California down here. Uh, really, really not seeing anything of any... Uh, major activity just a typical day down there a lot of small microquake activity on your typical zones around the san jacinto fault zone the san andreas fault sleeps for now up in idaho got a little swarm going on up there around stanley idaho with a number of three pointers and some twos out there as well this is just off the sawtooth fault system uh and if i recall here this area had a six pointer back in uh, i believe around 2019 or so 2020 um can't say it's uh, you know primed for another six pointer, but uh, maybe uh, it looks like it's just off of it. Either way, it's been a hot spot of earthquake activity here with a little bit of migration off of the Sawtooth Fault system in the last 30 days to the east. Uh, so just watch that. Uh, could see some larger activity there. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there, but uh, let's go double check the right now calendar. And right now, there's not a whole lot going on. Those darker blue lines there was probably some wind events in the afternoon time period. Uh, but as far as earthquake activity goes, pretty much non-existent. Uh, before we get too far off here, the Northern California area, uh, two-pointer coming in earlier this evening as well. That uh, about 14 miles deep here at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Now that is down into it there. So let's see what we got here for trimmer, trimmer, trimmer activity. 26 epicenters of trimmer. It's gone down a little bit. Uh, actually, a lot, I should say, compared to the past couple weeks out here where we're looking at a couple hundred uh, events out here per day. But uh, even though we still got a little bit up here underneath this area, uh, it's interesting that we got this earthquake uh, at about 14 miles deep here underneath this region. Uh, trimmer activity occurring a little bit further up north here, but gotta watch this region. It's it, uh, it Like any major subduction zone area it can go at any time here and it's Could obviously see a partial rupture here of the Cascadia compared to a full rupture and that alone here partial rupture at the southern end highly more probable uh, resulting in up to about probably about an 8.4 earthquake or so across that area uh, just got to watch that. That's my neck of the woods here. I live outside of Chico there in Northern California. Uh, some smaller quake activity around Oklahoma and up into Kansas and the typical oil fields out there getting hit. Uh, look at the worldwide activity. Uh, a near six-pointer. Uh, this earthquake there in Japan came in as a six-point, uh, I think it was a 6.1, got dropped down to a 5.8 earlier uh, just before noon noontime number fours out there this has just been a a little hot spot of earthquake activity centered around the southern end of the curl cam chatka trench getting into the japan trench here a little bit with a couple uh, other earthquakes there in the last 24 hours uh, the curl cam chatka definitely primed here for some large earthquake activity and the japan trench of course that's where that nine pointer struck here back in 2011 so i don't think it's set up for another nine pointer at least this area uh, up here potentially but there's always a, you know a chance that we could see some larger earthquake activity down here across the uh, uh, Japan Trench not not in the 9.0 range though but 
uh, with the elevated activity happening around here, it's very possible. And, of course, you got to watch the Nankai Trough. It's uh, quiet for now. Uh, down across the New Zealand area, let's see what we got. Where's that 1.8? That's, okay, that's that earthquake there um, south of the Hayward Fault. Uh, New Zealand, 4.3 there again. This When was that earthquake? Uh, USGS not showing it, but... Uh, a lot of this activity here from yesterday looks like that earthquake 3d globe is just a little bit past the 24 hour threshold so we need to go probably about I'm guessing right about there should be good uh, either way New Zealand's been quite active down here kind of kind of unzipping towards the south here a little bit with the latest quake of 4.3 south of the South Island region off the Alpine fault here just off the plate boundary that uh, is another area that's very well primed um, for some large earthquake activity. Quite active out there across the uh, this area of the plate boundary and the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, Fiji, Tonga, all seen uptick here. And in fact, it's been a it's been a fairly active day out here, uh, more so than average, I would say. And I, I think it's got to do with the proton events out here, folks. We're continuing to see that here for two days in a row. Yesterday, we had uh, what, four six-pointers. Today, almost a six-pointer, but broader-scale earthquake activity ramping up on a large scale out here. This is way more active than normal uh, on your daily counts. Uh, I mean, there's just a lot of earthquake activity happening here, and it's uh, I believe that's the, the effects there of the protons that are slamming into the planet still to this hour. Uh, even across the Mediterranean, Middle East areas, look at all this earthquake activity ramping up quite a bit a little swarm going on there around turkey the latest quake 2.9 looks like it's outside the um, greece area around crete the atlantic ocean quiet that's one area where well there hasn't been a whole lot of earthquake activity here uh, since the protons arrived middle america trench fairly active as well some threes and fours down there but uh we'll keep an eye on things We're still uh like i say the the proton events are uh I think the culprits, the culprit of seeing larger earthquake activity and elevated earthquake activity as we're seeing right now. A quick glance here at the uh, big island of Hawaii and the Kilauea volcano. Let's double check that here real quick, see what we have. Uh, should be getting close to another eruption here, uh, maybe another day or so. We'll take a look here at the uh, deformation data, see what we have. Yeah, we're going up here. Been going up uh, in the last few days here since the pause in the eruption right around the 26th of this month. Uh, so now we're approaching a level here in terms of inflation where we could be looking at a uh, near-term eruption again across Kilauea Volcano. This is just a rinse and repeat. Nothing of out of the ordinary activity going there. It's just episode number... Um, it's going to be episode number 24 that's coming up here. This has been ongoing rinse and repeat cycle since uh, December of last year. Nothing has changed. Uh, we'll know if it does change. There'll be some blockage, maybe some uh, lower output of uh, the volume of magma, but everything's on cue for uh, an eruption here in a day or so across that area again. Uh, let's see here. So real quick. Still looking, uh, still looking probable, folks. If you're out there, highly probable across the northern tier states, maybe even down into the middle latitudes. But I couldn't see it out there across northern California. I just, I'm, I don't really want to go out of town and, and see what I can see. But uh, last time, back in May, when we had the decent event, I could see it from my backyard easily. Uh, but I can't tonight, so it just may not be strong enough. Uh, but either way, uh, things are kicking up. And uh, if you're an Aurora watcher, get out there and check it out. Uh, things are looking favorable as uh, far as that goes. Starting to key up a little bit here to the north as far as that red line goes. But I think as long as it stays south here, uh, we'll be good for uh, an Aurora show through the rest of the evening. Storm Prediction Center uh, for the remainder of the night. Looks like some noise out there around Texas, um, Austin area. A little 2% tornado chance there. Uh, some wind and some hail threats there for the remainder of the night uh, into early Monday morning. This is going to be for the Monday day period. 
start of the work week. Got uh, some tornado threats up into uh, Nebraska, it looks like. Some wind and a little bit of hail threats out there as that uh, severe weather shifts a little bit further north uh, towards the northern plains here. Quick glance here at this uh, numerical model. I'm going to keep my eye on the Gulf here because, well, we got uh, maybe some type of tropical system coming in here around the 12th of this month. Now, it's still showing what looks like a hurricane entering into the Gulf there and slamming right into eastern Texas, maybe Louisiana area. This is a ways out. I get that. But uh, these models can, if they run consistent like this, and you know don't don't divert off of what it's showing with each model run then it could come to play as far as a uh, hurricane entering into that area about uh, looks like the 12th 13th or so is when we'll know a little bit more information about it but uh, we'll continue to watch that and check back on it as the uh, time period gets a little bit closer seismograph stations out there pretty quiet for now folks hope everyone has a good night uh, we will catch you guys out here for the um Monday morning update. Keep an eye there on the Bay Area. And uh, have a good one. We'll see you guys in the morning sometime.